This is a little bit of a repeat from one a year ago, but it's important for new ones in the community to be able to understand the opportunities for extensibility that is available to them. So we wanted to share with the community. Enhanced styles for list formatting in uh, lists web part. This is one by Hugo and myself. We contributed to this and built it together. Uh, and so I want to make sure he got the due credit that is deserved, meaning that he did most of the work and uh, I'm just the voice. So there you go. Why and what is a enhanced styles web part? Well, it is an SPFX web part and it provides the opportunity to include enhanced CSS styles on a single page. So you may say, well, why not just use an SPFX extension, right? Well, an extension is going to affect every page in your site collection, uh, whereas the web part is only going to affect the pages where the web part is added. That may seem simple, but it's important from a performance perspective. That is going to provide you better performance, going to allow the use of different enhancements to list formatting in different sections of a site. Uh, and you don't have to worry about connecting to a list to pull the data back uh, for the enhancements that we're going to show you how to take advantage of today. So where and how can you use it? Well, uh, as Spider-Man said, with great power comes great responsibility. Now, this is a very powerful web part that is going to allow you to inject CSS onto a page, but that does not mean you want to use it for evil. You want to use it only on the HTML you own, which means the classes that you are creating within your list formatting definition. So be a superhero, not a supervillain. Only control the HTML that you know that you own. Uh, obviously, on, from a dependency perspective, you are going to be relying on this web part to provide that extensibility. Uh, so it's important to know this is not an out-of-the-box feature. It is not something attached directly to the list formatting definition. Uh, it is an enhancement uh, above and beyond uh, the out-of-the-box experience. But once you're comfortable with that and you're able to uh, utilize that, what are the opportunities that you can take advantage of? You can utilize pseudo classes and elements, so things like hover effects, and then you can include animations, so using keyframes and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's not something that is available as of yet to list formatting at the level that we're going to show you. Um, but again, this is a lightweight extensibility that provides a lot of power to the awesomeness that you're going to see in a moment from Chris Kemp. So let's take a moment and look at a brief demo of what it is that you can take advantage of. So we're looking here at a list. Now, this is a simple list of community contributors. We've got some photographs, some titles, some information, uh, pictures, etc. And of course, we know that we can apply things like list formatting to it at a view level. So if I come over and we look at uh, a version of that that we've used in the past, it shows all of the information that we saw on that list, but in a more graphical way, right? So we're taking uh, the icons here and we're showing the different information, like their LinkedIn, their favorite Marvel uh, or DC, where they're located in Canada, their favorite season or sport, etc. Uh, but can we enhance this with additional hover effects and uh, transform effects? Well, absolutely. So I'm going to go over to a page because remember, all of our list formatting definitions can be inherited within the list web part. So what I've done on this page is I've simply just dropped the list web part. So I edit that and we see if I edit that web part, uh, we've got a list web part out of the box. This is all completely uh, achievable by simply using the out of the box. But if you were to use the enhanced list formatting web part, as we can see available right here, when I add that, I've added, added it to my tenant. So we have uh, the ability to take advantage of that. If I add that, we do get a little bit of that GPS warning, right? We need to be reminded that this is a very powerful and must be used for good web part. So if you misuse the web part, uh, then you're going to experience things like loss of styles, broken styles. Why is SharePoint broken? Tears, nightmares, blue screens of death. Oh my, no one wants that. So make sure you use it and we hit accept. We're good to go. We're, we want to be superheroes. You're given the opportunity to add custom styles. You can see it already shows up here in the right panel. If I click that, it will just, if that's closed and I click that, it'll bring it open. We can also expand it for a, a greater ability or, or more, uh, real estate on our screen if we want to do that. Um, and then we can just add our CSS styles. So I've got a number of styles here that I'm going to, to simply add in off screen and they're just nothing more than basic CSS. So uh, you can see we did a really good uh, hard work here in making sure that you're also getting that color coding and it's not just plain text you're seeing. So if I hit save and I close that, see what's happened now uh, is it took the labels and just provided some transformation to some of the things, things that you're not able to achieve 
via inline styles. Very simple, uh, certainly maybe a little archaic in its view, right? Looks a little vintage there, uh, but it's just showing the ability of being able to use that transform uh, and uh, the ability to override those pseudo attributes. Uh, but wait, there's more. If we replace that, now we're going to get into a little bit of a hover effect, right? So now we've turned into a little more rounded corners, added some colors. Um, and if I hover over it, now you can see there's a little bit of a glimmer that happens, right? So we see that animation. We're able to change the color of the primary text there. Uh, and we also add that little orange glimmer that goes across the screen and gives us the, a little nicer effect, draws the attention for the user. And it's driven by the user, right? We're not adding gratuitous animation here for the purposes of just annoying or trying to draw attention without the user having decided to see that interaction themselves. Let's jump to another version of a list formatting. So here we've got a Polaroid effect. A pretty cool effect. What you're seeing here is completely out of the box. This is using just a basic list formatting definition, some of our favorite people as well. And it's nice. It actually looks good. It's a good way to represent, right? It's kind of got that vintage look as well. Uh, but again, what if we wanted to take it to the next step? So we're going to edit this. We're going to add that web part onto the screen. I'm going to say, I accept add custom styles, and I'm going to add some CSS here. And again, we're just getting into some, some basic hover effects, right? So we're looking at that pseudo attribute right there, something that we can't achieve using just the base list formatting definition on its own. What does that give us? Well, now when I hover over, see what happens is it brings a little more attention. Again, it's user driven, which is important, uh, but it brings a little more attention to the actual card or Polaroid that we're hovering over. Of course, we can take it another step. So we'll uh, change our custom styles here, select all, delete, come over. Now we see what's happened is we've got a little different, right? We're injecting a use of a custom font. We're very specific in our use case here, by the way. Uh, we're not looking to override areas that we don't own. Uh, we are adding it to the HTML that we do own in a very specific use case. And in this case, we're using it because remember when we use Polaroids, we'd write the name, maybe the location, the year, et cetera. So it adds a little more degree of um, reality to this particular experience. Now, uh, you'll notice as well that it went black and white, right? So when I hover over it, well, now we're able to do that color contrast, right? So now we're bringing even more attention to the focus of the individual that we're hovering over. Again, a user action, a very definitive action by the user to ensure that we're, we're only acting on what they are specifically hovering over. We're not randomly bringing them to the forefront, but it allows even more information uh, to kind of be highlighted as we're going about uh, navigating the screen. Now, lastly, the last demo I'll show you takes it one step further uh, because I love this one. It's pretty cool. And again, everything you're seeing so far is nothing more than CSS, right? There's no JavaScript here. We're not injecting JavaScript. We're simply using plain CSS. So you'll notice now the heart has been added, right? We've got a little heart added there. Uh, and if I hover over it, we still get that effect where it brings it to the forefront, uh, uh, kind of squares it up. Um, but when I hover over that heart, we get that little sprite, right? So we're using a GIF animation uh, to be able to uh, provide an extra layer of experience and interactivity. This could be a, a hyperlink that clicks back to some um, flow or something like that that actually favorites our, our uh, users here, our community contributors, right? Um, but it adds just a little extra experience to the to the user's interactivity, which is pretty uh, pretty fantastic. And again, list formatting is getting better and better every day. Chris always shows amazing things, and I'm sure he's going to show another amazing thing here in a few moments. Um, but this is one opportunity for you. Now, remember, points to keep in mind, it is one-to-one -one on the page, right? So where you drop the web part is where it's going to be used. If you're going to use this in other places, then yes, you're going to have to drop that web part, maybe copy the styles. It does allow you to ensure that they're scoped only to the page though, right? So you're not including a bunch of extra code or CSS or even just a call to another list where the CSS may live. Uh, it is specifically scoped and enhances that performance. So let's just go back to the slides briefly. And just for some additional links, we'll include these in the chat uh, as well as my blog post. Uh, you can learn a little bit more about pseudo elements, classes, and animations at these web URLs. And the demo or the uh, web part is also available at the PNP SPFX uh, repository. So please don't uh, hesitate to take advantage of it. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. 
other than that, Julie, back to you. Awesome. Thank you. That was very cool. Neat way to see um, you get uh, the CSS in the page, but I love your warning because don't manipulate the DOM. Thank you.